Hey there, General Science boys and girls, and welcome to our video lesson covering the behavior of gases. All this material can be found in 14.3 of your textbook. And uh, what we're going to talk about today, gases, how they behave, and how we can use two laws to really describe why gases uh, are constantly moving around and uh, why they do indeed fill the shapes of their containers, okay? So we're going to be going through these notes right here. All right, just one page, all right, not two pages like the previous two lessons. Uh, we'll be going to a different uh, type of animation as well uh, and also checking out a little bit of a preview of what you're going to be doing um, collectively as a class with this lab uh, covering 14.3. So I'm going to go ahead and get my screen blocker up on here. And let's start by just in general reviewing what gases are. Okay, uh, gases fill their containers, they have no set shape and no set volume. Why? Well, they're highly, highly energized, um, contain so much thermal energy that they can break those two natural attractions of gravity and electromagnetism uh, between the particles that make up that gaseous state of matter. Um, the pressure of the gas, the temperature of the gas, and the volume of the gas all work together to help give the gas this unique property of filling the space that it's taking up and also having no set uh, shape or volume. All right. Um, each of the two statements above, gas filling their containers and gas having no set volume, is uh, dependent on the gas's pressure, temperature, and volume. All right. The kinetic theory of matter states that gas particles collide with one another and rain, maintain that rapid motion. They're high energy. All right. So uh, these two laws, Boyle's law and Charles's law, uh, help to explain why gas indeed behaves this way, why it doesn't have a set shape, why it doesn't have a set volume. So first up here, Boyle's law states that when temperature is constant, okay, and again, our uh, actual um, unit of measurement, standard unit of measurement for temperature and general science is Kelvin. We'll look at Celsius, but don't forget Kelvin. I may use Kelvin from time to time here. When temperature is constant, all right, if the volume increases, the pressure is going to decrease. And it's this formula right here. VI times PI equals VF times PF, where VI is the initial volume, PI the initial pressure, VF the final volume, PF the final pressure, okay? So when temperature is constant, Boyle's law is telling us that that gas, if that volume increases, the pressure is going to decrease. If that pressure increases, the volume will decrease, all right? So volume and pressure are inversely related when speaking of constant temperature, all right? If one goes up, the other must go down. If the other goes up, the other one's got to go down, all righty? Okay. So for Charles's law, we have uh, a little bit of a, a adjustment to what you have on the notes right here. I've got this uh, flip-flopped or, or mixed around a little bit. I've got the word pressure in there one too many times. Uh, Charles's law has a direct relationship between volume and temperature. Okay, so this right here that says pressure, don't take note of that. That should be temperature, okay? And I wonder if I can actually write on here. It's not looking like I can. I don't have it plugged into the board. But this pressure, that should be temperature. So when pressure is constant, when pressure is constant, if the volume of a gas is increased, then the temperature will also increase. Or if the temperature is increased, then the volume will increase. If the temperature is decreased, then the volume will decrease. If the volume is decreased, then the temperature will decrease. And we have the formula to the side there in parentheses. So don't pay attention to the word pressure here. That is wrong. This should be temperature, okay? So an example of this is an inflated basketball. I always had these problems growing up. We played a lot of basketball, played a lot of basketball outside on the tennis courts or in someone's driveway. Uh, and we left our basketballs either out in the yard or out in the driveway, or excuse me, out in the garage that wasn't insulated or heated. So what would happen would, would our basketball would deflate due to the temperature of the environment decreasing. But slowly and surely throughout the day, it would also reinflate in a way. Okay, what's happening to that volume of gas, the, the same amount of gas is in that basketball, but if you cool it down, it will condense, all right? You're taking some of the energy away from those particles, so it'll start going from gas and getting close to a liquid. It won't become a liquid, but it's getting closer there, so the particles are slowing down and condensing, causing that object to deflate. But if you were to heat it back up, it will reinflate, all right? So to visualize that, we've got this little uh, animation here. 
83 degrees Kelvin is placed into liquid nitrogen at 77 degrees Kelvin, the balloon decreases 1 273rd in volume for each degree drop in temperature. Charles's law states that the volume of a quantity of gas at constant pressure varies directly with the Kelvin temperature. As the balloon warms back up to 273 degrees Kelvin, the balloon returns to its original volume. Into liquid nitrogen. So pretty cool stuff right here. What's happening is they're taking that balloon, placing it into liquid nitrogen, and it is slowing down the gas particles so much that the, uh, the volume of that balloon is actually shrinking. Okay, it's not losing that gas. Because once you take it out, what happens? Go to this clip right here. At 77 degrees Kelvin, the balloon decreases well, we watch, I guess. 273rd in volume. You see that they've completely collapsed. In temperature. You've slowed that Charles gas down, but you're starting to re-energize that gas, gas and it's starting to, again, fill its container the completely. Temperature. As the balloon warms back up. So pretty cool stuff there with uh, Bo uh, Charles's Law and uh, temperature and uh, volumes direct relationship, okay? So that's what we have for the notes here, all right? That's gonna be it for the notes over 14.3 uh, behaviors of gases. Pretty basic, Boyle's Law and Charles's Law. Um, we'll do a couple things to kind of uh, uh, further solidify some of the information about um, what each law is telling us and uh, how for Boyle's Law we have an inverse relationship between two of those three major uh, characteristics of gases, pressure, temperature, and volume and how Charles's Law, uh, we've got a direct relationship between two of those three, okay? For each one, one thing, one of those characteristics is held constant, um, and then uh, a relationship between the other two exists. So uh, that's all we got for 14.3 here. We'll also be carrying out this lab that you see right here, and this is going to be as a class um, altogether. Uh, you can see this apparatus that we have. We can adjust the volume here with our beaker. We have a pressure scale. We have a thermometer to go ahead and give us uh, the temperature, and it's all on a hot plate, so we can adjust the temperature. So those three factors, again, those three characteristics of a gas, its pressure, its temperature, and its volume, we can manipulate all three of those to help us better learn Charles's and Boyle's laws. That's all I got. See you later.